If you'd like to learn to take awesome professional headshots using key lighting in an entry-level DSLR like this one right here, which is the Nikon D3400, then stay tuned, this video is for you. I've been asked on many occasions to take professional headshots. Now, I've seen professional headshots used in a variety of ways. More often than not, I see them used in LinkedIn profiles, but I've also seen them used in various publications such as magazines and brochures. And on some occasions, I have clients that have come to me because they're speakers at a conference and they may just want a digital representation of themselves. Now, regardless of the reason, that professional headshot is really used to enhance someone's business profile. Keep in mind, this is a great way to network with people and earn a little extra money. Now, do you need expensive equipment to pull this off? No, you really just need a basic entry-level DSLR like this one right here. And I have some equipment behind me that I'm gonna jump into in just a minute. But I really want you to understand that this is more about technique than it is equipment. So it really doesn't matter what you have. You could have a Canon T6i or the T7i or perhaps the Sony A6000 series. It really doesn't matter. Now, like I do with my other videos, I wanna level set and provide the game plan. I'm going to start off by going over the equipment that I'm going to use. And then we're going to step into the layout. I want you to see just how I position the equipment to try and get the optimal shots. Then we're going to go over the settings on the flashes, and then we're going to go over the settings in the camera. And I'm going to step into post-processing after taking a handful of shots. I want to see how we can modify some of these images. Not that you have to post-process, but I shoot in RAW, so I'm going to take you along for that ride. And then I'm going to close out with a few final thoughts. So with all that said, Let's go ahead, jump right in, and have some fun. Let's step into the equipment that I'm using. Now I want you to understand you don't necessarily need all the equipment that you see here. A portion of this equipment will probably do the trick. This is just what I have at my disposal and this is what I plan on using today. So off to the side here obviously is the camera. Now on top of the camera is the Altera trigger system. Now this trigger right here fires off the receivers and I have two receivers, one right here and one right here. Now, you might ask yourself, do you need a trigger system? Well, it depends. Some cameras out there have the ability to leverage what's called commander mode. Now, what is commander mode? Well, that's the camera's ability to leverage its built-in flash to fire off the speed lights. Now, this is really a nice feature, but I know that the Nikon D3400 does not have that ability, and that's the reason why I'm using this trigger system. So, Back over here, again, the trigger system, the camera, and it's sitting on top of this tripod. Now, this is my Zomi tripod. I've used it in various videos in the past. It just works well. Doesn't really matter what you have. Just be sure you have a tripod of some sort. Next to it, this is my newer 750 Mark II speed light. Now, the speed light works really well, and attached to it is my portable diffuser. Now, I really like this diffuser, and I typically use it when I'm out and about and I feel like a flash is gonna be needed. Say it's a low light situation, it just helps prevent those harsh lights. I'm gonna make use of this today. Now this speed light and the receiver are sitting on top of yet another tripod. Now behind me, this is just a generic photographic umbrella. Nothing real special about it. Um, I can post a link in that description below if you're interested in it. I've been using it for years, it works out well. But the idea behind this umbrella is to really broaden that spectrum of light. Now, this is attached to the umbrella stand and on top of it is yet another newer Mark II uh, 750 speed light. So um, again, it's not that you necessarily need two flashes, you can probably just get by with one, but this is what we're gonna use. Now behind me is just a white wall, nothing real special. It's not that you need a white wall, uh, maybe just a brightly colored wall of some sort uh, will do the trick. What we're gonna step into now will be the layout. Um, I want you to see how I'm going to lay out the equipment and then the distance and then after that we'll jump into uh, the camera settings. So let's go ahead and take a look at the layout. We don't have a lot of room right here, but you want to start off by identifying where your subject is going to stand. Now I don't want to stand right up against that bright wall behind. I want to leave myself about 5 or 10 feet if possible because we don't want any direct shadows hitting that light. So. Where's this going to happen? Well, it looks like a good spot would be right about here. So 
knowing that that's where I'm going to stand, I'm going to position everything else I have accordingly. So I'm going to go ahead and make that happen. To begin with, I'm going to grab the umbrella. Now there's two ways to deal with an umbrella and a speed light. You can actually shoot through it or you can have that umbrella reflect the light back. Now in this case, I want to shoot through the umbrella, which means I'm going to turn this umbrella in this direction right here. I'm going to position it off to the side. Maybe something like this. Okay, that actually looks pretty good. Now something to consider here is you want your brighter light, wherever that's coming from, facing the front of the subject. And I'll show you what I mean. So for example, if the subject's going to be facing this direction, you want them like this and you want this light right there. That's going to be my strong light, okay? And keeping in mind that speed light, when we get into the setting behind it, I'm going to turn that up quite a bit so that gives me the most light. Now the camera, I'm just going to put right in the front. I'm going to want about five feet or so between the camera and the subject, which is myself in this case. And that looks about right to me. I may push that camera back just a little bit. Maybe something like, like that right there. I think this is looking pretty good, okay? So now we have the other speed light with the diffuser attached to it and this tripod. Now I'm gonna put this off to the side just a little bit. What I want this to do is I'm really gonna tone this down quite a bit. So I'm gonna go into the manual setting on this speed light and we're gonna dial it down. I don't want a lot of light coming from this, but I don't want some, I don't want those really dark, harsh shadows either. And that's what this is all about. Keeping in mind that again, if you only have one light, you wanna do this light right here. Don't be as concerned about the other light. I'm going to put this off to the side. Now, this looks pretty good. It's over here. I can dial that down, which I'll probably do. I'll probably just set that down a little bit. And um, let's go ahead and take a look at the settings on the speed light, and then we'll jump into the camera. I'm going to do my best to show this to you, but this is the flash that's on the back of the umbrella. Now the first thing you want to do is be sure that we're in manual mode. Now in manual mode I have the ability to adjust the power. Now full power is 1 over 1 and the weakest power would be 1 over 128. Now in this case I'm going to start off with 1 over 2 because I really want a strong power on this flash shooting through the umbrella. Once I have that set I can just simply turn this around and this flash is ready to go. This is the flash with a portable diffuser attached to it. Now similar to the other flash, you want to be sure that you're in manual mode. And in this case, it's set to 1 over 32, which is a nice low powered flash. Now I may try 1 over 64, but I think we'll start at 1 over 32. And this flash is good to go. The first thing we want to do is ensure that we're in manual mode. And on this particular camera, that's achieved by moving this big dial on top of the camera to the letter M. You can also see it on the back of this display because it says M right here. That lets us know we're in manual mode. Now in this particular camera, I'm going to access the quick menu option, which is this I button in the bottom left hand corner. When I press this, it gives us a list of choices here. Now I'm going to talk about just a few of them. To begin with, I'm going to talk about the quality of the image itself. It's highlighted right here and it's showing as raw. If I hit the OK button on the right hand side, it gives me various choices. Now I like to go ahead and take all my shots in raw, so I'm going to leave it in raw. Next thing I want to talk about is the focus mode. Now the focus mode is something that we're going to talk about in just a minute. I'm going to show you how we're going to lock focus but I'm on AF continuous. You can also be on AF single. It doesn't really matter which one you're on. I'm going to go ahead and leave it on continuous. Why? Because I like back button focus, which is, makes use of this button right up here. Now I have a video on how to set it up on this particular camera and I'll post a link in the description below in case you're interested. Now the last thing I want to mention on this quick menu is the ISO. Now this is important because we want our ISO to remain as low as possible so we have the best quality image. And I want this to be 100. Even though it's highlighted 100, take a look at what's happening up here. So up here it is flashing ISO-A. 
that tells me that we have auto ISO enabled and the camera is setting it to 4000 in order to gain a proper exposure but we don't want that so what we want to do is disable our auto ISO and set it to 100 so let's go ahead and do that now again on this particular camera I'm going to hit the menu button here on the left hand side and I want to be sure I'm in the shooting menu which I am and you can see I have highlighted ISO sensitivity setting I'm going to go ahead and hit the OK button over here and you can see the options right down here auto ISO sensitivity control is set to on so I want to hit OK and select off and at this point I can change the ISO right here in the menu setting or I can push the menu button and go back to the main screen and access the quick menu option again right here by hitting the I button and now you can see the ISO is set to 100 so with that said don't be overly concerned by this right here now this is our exposure indicator the camera saying this is really really underexposed but don't worry about that next things I want to talk about will be the shutter speed and the f-stop so we want to change this right here I'm going to start off by changing the shutter speed now the way it's done on this particular camera is with the dial right up here when you're in manual mode I can just rotate the dial and it'll adjust the shutter speed now you don't want to be any slower than 1 60th of a second and you don't want to be any faster than the maximum sync speed of the flash which is typically around 1 200th of a second now what I'm going to do here is I'm probably going to stay right at 1 over 125 maybe 1 over 100 um, I kind of like this right here I think this will be a good speed for us now the next thing I want to do is take a look at the aperture now the way you adjust the aperture on this camera is on the top up here next to the shutter button where my fingers kind of bouncing around there's a plus minus button if I hold that down I can rotate the dial on the back and it will adjust the aperture now we want this aperture to be as wide as possible and that means f5 for this particular lens and camera and that's okay so we have a shutter speed of 1 over 125 apertures f5 and our ISO is set to 100 now we are good to go the next thing we want to do is lock focus and I'm going to show you how to do that right now I've rotated the camera 90 degrees to put us in portrait mode and I also enabled single point autofocus now that's relatively important here because we want to be specific when it comes to locking focus now if you're taking a photo of someone else it makes it relatively easy you're just going to lock focus on their eyeball and then take your shot but in this case as I'm doing this demonstration and it's just me I have to get creative and if you're going to do a shot for yourself you're going to need to get creative as well so what did I do here well I'm using a prop off to my side is just a piece of plumbing that's all it is and it's stuck in a bucket now this is about six feet from the camera and what I'm going to do is lock focus on the top of this plumbing now once I have focus I'm going to move this prop to the side and it's going to be my gauge as to how far I need to get in front of the camera to hopefully have focus on my eyeball now I'm also going to make use of the built-in timer on this camera I'm going to set it to 10 seconds I figure that that'll give me enough time to get in front of the camera and get positioned so with all that set up and we're all ready to go let's go ahead and take some shots and then we'll move into post processing
took a total of 23 images and I imported all of them. Now I want you to keep in mind, you don't necessarily need to post process if you're shooting in JPEG. Now I shoot in RAW, which means I have to process these to some extent, and I typically use Lightroom to do that. Now during that photo shoot, I did modify the flash power at various times just to get a different look and feel for the different shots. And in this case, this happens to be the very last image I took, and I like the way this looks. You can see we have a key light coming in from this side of the image, and it looks good. Over here, it's relatively soft, and I like the background. The background's light, but it's not too light to where it looks artificial, and I think it helps to make me stand out in this image. It just looks decent. Now, if we look at some of the other images we took, like this one right here, I think there's too much light coming in on this side over here and we're really not establishing a strong key light. Now we can take any one of these images and touch them up a little bit, but I think for the sake of this demonstration, I'm just going to stay with this one, the very last one I took. Now with this and within Lightroom, I'm not going to make a lot of adjustments here. I'm just going to touch on a few things and I'm going to quickly step through this. Now I have other videos on Lightroom and I may post links to those in the description if you're interested. But let me just touch on this real quick. As we come down, I'm not gonna do a whole lot up top here. I'm just gonna modify the clarity a bit. I want you to keep in mind there's no one right way when you post process. It's really just kind of what you're looking for. I'm gonna bump our vibrance just a little bit to bring some extra color into this. And I think that's about all I'm gonna do up here. I'm gonna close this band and step into the tone curve. I'm gonna raise our highlights just a little bit. Yeah, I'll bring that down just a tad. And then let's go ahead and raise our lights up. Now, if you notice, if we raise them a lot, see what it does to that background. And it, it kind of overexposes the whole image. So I wanna bring this up just a little bit because I like to accentuate that key light. And I think that looks good right about there. I'm not gonna really do anything to the darks or the shadows because I feel they're already set well in this image. I'm gonna go ahead and close that tone curve and I'm gonna skip down to details. I'm gonna increase the sharpening quite a bit here and then I'm gonna modify the mask. Now I'm gonna hold down the Alt key and just drag the slider to the right. Anything you see in white is taking advantage of the sharpening. Now I don't want the whole image to be sharpened. I really just wanna get the edges. I'm going to move this over and I think that looks good right about there. So now just the edges are taking advantage of the sharpening. Now we shot this with an ISO of 100. Nonetheless, I'm going to apply a little bit of noise reduction here just because I want to smooth the image out. I think that looks good right there. Now I can see that I'm catching a little bit of light from this flash on my tooth. I'm going to go ahead and jump in. And we're going to see if we can take care of that with the spot removal tool. Now the way this works is you come right over the spot you want to remove and you can adjust that up and down. I'm just using the flywheel on the mouse to make that happen. I'm going to sit right over the top here and go ahead and left click. And Lightroom's going to try to match the color. Now, I don't know if that's a real good match. You can kind of see that for yourself. Um, yeah, it's not perfect, but it's it, it really does kind of uh, cover up the uh, the bright light that we had and I think I'm gonna go ahead and just take that I don't think that's uh, I don't think it's that far off color wise so let's go ahead and keep that and I'm gonna go ahead and try to touch up this one little tiny spot right here and we'll see what it does there I think that looks good so we'll go ahead and take that right there and I kind of like the way that looks now I'm going to use the adjustment brush as well. I'm going to see if I can sharpen up the teeth and maybe just alter the color a bit. So I'm going to show you how this works. I'm just going to paint right over the teeth here. I'm just going to make this relatively quick. And I think that's good. I'm going to come over here and I can make some adjustments to what I just colored in. Now I can change the temperature here and you'll notice if I introduce a lot of blue, what that does to the teeth, and you can go the other way with it. I want to introduce just a little bit of blue because it'll help to whiten up these teeth. And then I'm going to increase exposure just slightly. Eh, actually, I think I'm going to leave that exposure where it was. So I really just want to introduce just a little bit of blue there. And I think that looks good. And the other thing I'm going to do is see if we can increase the 
clarity a bit. So I'm going to come down here. We're going to bump this up just a tad. Be right there. Increase the sharpness just a bit. And let's take a look at what contrast does when we increase it. Yeah, we can decrease that just a tad. I think that'll do right there. I'm going to go ahead and say done. And we're going to jump back and see how it looks. I think that's looking pretty good. Now, I'm going to take a look at my eyes here. We didn't exactly nail focus on the eye. It looks like focus is kind of caught back a little bit, but I'm okay with that. We're going to use our adjustment brush and we're going to lighten up the eyes just a bit. I'm just painting right now and I'm going to do it to this eye. We're going to do it over here to this eye. And I think we're good there. I'm going to come back over here and I'm just going to increase the exposure a bit. And you can see how it lightens up both eyes. I'm going to dial that back just a little bit. I'm going to increase the clarity and increase the sharpness. And I'm kind of liking the way that looks. I'm going to increase our exposure just a little bit more. And so far so good. I think this looks decent. Now what I'm going to do is do another brush and I'm just going to hit the color of my eyes. And I'll show you why here in just a second. So I've got that eye covered and I'm going to go ahead and hit this eye. I'm going to go ahead and increase the exposure and you can see how it really lightens up the color of the eyes. I'm going to also introduce just a little bit of color to the eye itself. Go with maybe just a little bit of yellow to really try to bring out that uh, the brown in the eyes. I kind of like that right there. Now this eye is also catching a little bit of that, that uh, speed light we have. So I'm going to use the spot removal tool. I'm going to come in here and see if we can pull that out. Um, <laughs> it tried to match color and I don't think it did a very good job. So let's go ahead and grab that. That looks better. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pull back and let's see what it looks like. Now that looks pretty decent in my opinion. The only thing I think I'm going to do at this point is just crop a bit. I'm going to bring this up. I'm going to bring this down a bit. And I'm implementing the rule of thirds. You can see all my eyes are kind of lined up with the top third here. And I kind of like the way that's looking. I'm going to come in just a little bit on this side. And perhaps a little bit over here. And I think that is our final image. I like the way this uh, looks right here. And I think this would be a good image to post on LinkedIn or a professional publication of any sort. Headshots have been around for many years, and I suspect they'll be around for many more. Now keep in mind, we just did a relatively quick demonstration on how to take a professional headshot. And if you have just some basic equipment like one external flash and perhaps an umbrella to diffuse that light, you too can do the same thing. Now we finished up with doing post-processing, and I mentioned it wasn't required, but just keep in mind that it is also very powerful. Now I went through that relatively quick, and without doing the demonstration it goes much quicker. Now I only made a few minor enhancements to the image itself, but I want you to understand you can do more with it. For example, I could change that background and make it more of a grayscale, kind of like this right here. As you can see, that background color is gone for the most part. Some other stuff we can do is I could change the color of my shirt. Now I'm wearing this blue shirt right here, but for example, I can change the hue settings in Lightroom, and if I want to wear a green shirt, I can do that just like this right here. Now keeping in mind, we could change the color of this shirt to anything. But it's fun to know that you can make those additional modifications in post-process if you need to. And also understand that the person that you're doing this work for wants to personify their business look and feel and that's really what it's all about so it's just something to keep in mind that you have these tools at your disposal if you need them now i do have an instagram account i'm going to post a link to that in my description below so if you'd like to follow me do so and if this video has helped you out be sure to give it a thumbs up and if you haven't done so subscribe to the channel it's called real world more often than not i post videos about photography and technology but you never know so until the next video take care of yourself and be safe